Hi guys, so never in a million years did I ever think that I was going to record a video about bullet journaling. But since I'm transitioning from this book to this book, I thought I'd show you a little bit about the pages and how I structure my pages in my bullet journal. Hi guys, thank you guys so much for being here this week. My name is Felicia from Sweet Georgia Yarns and we are a hand-dyed knitting yarn company here in Vancouver in Canada. And every Friday I talk to you guys about what I'm knitting, what we're doing at Sweet Georgia, different updates that we have about the school of Sweet Georgia and just everything that's happening here. Now, one of the things that I started to do mm, almost two years ago now is I started this practice of bullet journaling. This is it seems really silly. Now, the reason why I thought it would be really silly and never in a million years did I ever think that I would make a video about bullet journaling because it's basically writing down notes about what you need to get done and just putting it into a book. There's a particular format that the founder of bullet journaling made and it's uh, his name is Ryder Carroll and you can go to bulletjournal.com and find out about the structure of how he initially designed bullet journaling to be. And it was a way for him to manage his ADHD, which I think it was about. He needed to be able to make notes, very clear notes about what he needed to get done, um, what things he had to remember and all these kinds of things. And uh, it was just a, a structure that he used to record all the things that he needed to do. Now, it's obviously been adopted by tons of people who use it for not only tracking what they want to get done, but also it serves as a creative outlet for people who are designing layouts, who are getting really fancy about the aesthetics and the appearance of what their bullet journals look like. A lot of people who are doing hand lettering, who are into crafting, a lot of people who are into paper crafting really enjoy bullet journaling because it allows them to show their schedules in a way that is very aesthetically pleasing to them and it it helps create a more just a better feeling around what they happen to be doing and it it just makes people feel good when they have a beautiful spread to look at you know when you're looking at all the things that you need to get done for the week if it's beautiful and it's beautiful to you it's going to make you feel better so a lot of people are attached to bullet journaling because of that there's actually they're making a documentary about bullet journaling that's coming out sometime but basically interviewing people who have taken bullet journaling and some people have made it their career you know to be instagrammers for bullet journaling or creating bullet journal templates just all these kinds of things to just somehow make your journal more appealing to look at for me personally i am using this strictly as a productivity tool um before this i've always used my phone and my computer and conjunction and I use this program called OmniFocus and so that is available on my Mac and also available on my phone and it's something that I can sort of record a lot of uh, ideas or input very very quickly and I get it all tacked down into that iPhone app and then it gets synced with my computer so when I'm sitting down at my computer I can go through all those things that have sort of been triggered in my head and figure out, you know, where do those things go? When do they need to get done and all that kind of stuff. So I was working with that very digital system for a long time, for like years and years and years now. And it was only maybe about two years ago that this whole idea of bullet journaling came to the forefront for me. I mean, it's been for other people for a long time. I realized afterwards that I was basically doing some form of this kind of journaling anyways, because I always had all of my to-dos in a digital format somewhere. But then when it actually came to the day or the week that we needed to get things done, I would always write it down on a piece of paper uh, about, you know, all the things that needed to get done. And they would have little check boxes next to them when they got done and I would check them off. And those, those sheets of paper, you know, would weeks and weeks and weeks of them would be, you know, stapled together or collected together with a paper clip or something like that. And I would keep these because in a lot of cases they had notes about my projects and clients that I was working with and all these kinds of things. And so all of that information in those pages, I still kept, even though they were just like loose leaf sheets of paper. So that's basically what a journal is. This bullet journal is, it's basically just a collection of paper that has all your lists of things that need to get done and how to get those done. So I'm not going to go through with you the exact 
way that Ryder Carroll talks about how to do your bullet journaling. But basically, the idea is that you put a dot and then you put what needs to get done and a dot and what needs to get done. And when you finish that item, then you make that dot into an X and then that thing is done. If you don't get that thing done and you move it to another day or you, you know, say, okay, I'm going to do it on Friday instead. I'm going to do it next week instead or whatever. Eventually then that dot turns into a little arrow to indicate that you have looked at that and have migrated it somewhere else. So there's lots of details about how to actually do your bullet journaling system. But in this case, I'm just going to show you how I lay out my spreads. Now, some of the fundamental things about bullet journaling is you have your daily list, which is today's the date, and then these are the things that need to get done for today. You might have a weekly spread to show all the things that need to get done for the week. Um, and then you might also have a monthly spread to look at, you know, all the things that are going to happen during the month. So it might be events and all these kinds of things. I know that when I originally started doing this bullet journaling, I followed Ryder Carroll's system quite closely because I wanted to see, you know, how does this all work? Where did this all come from? And so I tried to follow his structure, very minimal, very, very minimal structure. But I found that um, we just had too many things going on. So there was never enough space to write all of the things that needed to get done on any particular day um, in sort of a month view or a week view or things like that. So over the past maybe two years or so, I've been absorbing and looking at other people's spreads and, you know, kind of taking some ideas from one area and then looking at adding uh, other people's ideas and sort of Frankensteining my own sort of spread. So one of the things that might seem a little bit weird is the idea that you would make a monthly view and then put all the things on it and then you would also make a weekly view and then rewrite a lot of the things on that as well and then have a daily view and then rewrite a lot of those tasks there as well. I don't know if I'm doing that right, but I rewrite all of those events and all those things pretty much three times and it helps me remember what needs to get done. But I found that if I go through any particular week or whatever where I haven't used both a weekly view and a daily view and a monthly view, then I kind of get lost and confused about, you know, what's going on. So it's really helpful to be able to see everything at a week's glance. And then when you look at your day, all the things that you have to do in the day, all the things that you could schedule for that day. And it just makes for better planning and organization of the time that you have available to you. So what I'll do is I have just three or four more blank spreads in this old journal. And I'm going to draw for you what the sample spreads are going to look like for a monthly and a weekly and a daily view of how I lay things out in this bullet journal. So this one, this journal that I use, this is the Leuchtturm 1917. This is a lovely journal. Um, it is the dotted version. So here you can see maybe that there are just little tiny dots. Um, I don't know how far apart they are, but they're, they're nice. And so what I do is I do a monthly view, a weekly view, and a daily view. And so I can show you what I do for a monthly view. So I use these pens here. This is a Stablo 0.88. Those are nice. I have them in a couple of different colors and just the super, super inexpensive ruler. That helps me see what's going on. So I start my monthly spread four dots from the top. And then each day of the week is going to be six dots across. So I know that this is going to have four days of the week and this will have three days of the week. And then I just go down here because I know that there's going to be six dots for every square.
go. So the next thing I do is I just indicate on here where all of the days of the week are. And I always start with Monday first and then I put the two weekend days together so I can see what's going on. So it might be a little bit different than a regular calendar. Just go through and add the days of the week. So this is June. So that is super simple. That is just the monthly spread. And then I go through here and then I figure out which things are happening on which days. Things like I'll go through and add, you know, Saturday at 9 a.m. where I have soccer and those things. And then just add all those things. Those are color coded. I write in what the vlog of the day is going to be for that Friday. So I know what I'm going to shoot on the Wednesday, what I'm going to be editing on Thursday evening all of these kinds of things. So everything gets added to this calendar so it can have a month long overview of everything that is happening over the month. And it helps you plan in advance what's gonna be coming in the next couple of weeks. You could, if you wanted to, add little trackers down here. If you were doing tracking for, you know, all the days that you run, you could put all those numbers down here or you could put those down here. You could very well add a tracker. Maybe I should add a tracker can add all the numbers of the days of the week and then all the things that you want to track on the side here. And then when you track those things, you can just do a little X. So why don't we do that? Because I am training for a run, so I should do that. So let's go. And then on this side, I'm just going to write what it's going to be for. I should also track all the days that I knit and all the days that I get to do the things that I want to do. and we can see how that lines up. So that is that. Then next for a weekly spread, I use a similar layout. And in this case, I'm going to go again, six wide for each day. And then I start because I know I'm relatively hands free around 930. I put nine. And then I leave a space here where I'm going to put all my meal planning in there. So this one, we're going to do sample Is the weekly spread and then what I do is I put down here four different sections of tasks so the first one is MITs and so that is the most important tasks and I aim to have five most important tasks of the week and so these items that I put here need to get done every week no matter what 
And then the other tasks that I have on my list are here. And I would put all the things that need to get done here. So we'll call so-and-so, email so-and-so would go in there. And then I put all my School of Sweet Georgia activities under this section. And then anything that doesn't need to happen right away, but I need to remember to keep it on the list, goes in the upcoming section. So under School, if I am writing set of course, or if I have to do some editing, I write that all down here. And then upcoming, if there's something like prep for knit city, goes there. Now, finally, the daily page changes uh, every so often. So if there's some weeks that are lighter, I might include four daily sections in here. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then on the next page would be Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And then I'd have one page for notes for that week. But I've also found that um, oftentimes we need like a full page if those week if those days are getting really really super busy you might need a full day so again i start four down and then i make a little section like this and then what i'll put in here is the day of the week so if we're doing that monday may 28th i'll write a big number in here And I've left this space up here. And what this has helped do is I write the three things that have made me the most happy that day or the most thankful that day. I put a lot of my information in here about the highlights of the day. And it helps me remember to be really positive about all the things that happened. Now down this side, what I do is I try to space it out and show all of the things that I might want to do for that day. So if I write... A rough daily schedule and so with a lighter color pen I might go in here and say you know between this hour and this hour I'm gonna be filming and then if I have you know lunch here and then I spend another couple hours writing then I've blocked off these huge windows of time where I can actually get things done. And then if things actually change and the filming takes only this amount of time, then I can change it afterwards and say, oh, filming took this long. And then I spent the rest of the time doing email. And then I didn't eat lunch or I took this much for lunch. And then I spent this much time writing. Then I can see what I wanted to happen, what actually happened, and make adjustments in the future based on how much I think things will take, how long things will take. Another thing that I was doing earlier was also adding this. So this is BLDS. And so that is basically what you had for breakfast. You just write in what you had for breakfast that day goes here and lunch and then dinner and then snacks if you're tracking what you wanted to eat and what you were eating that day. For the rest of the space, I put in what needs to get done on that day. Um, if I need to edit, blah, blah, blah. If I need to write, blah, blah, blah. And then those things, as those things are getting done, that's when I start to check those off. And if anything happened that I didn't get to and I have to do it on another day, I'll copy this to the next day and then I'll make this into a little triangle to say that it's been forwarded. So going back at the end of the day, I'll come up to the top and then I'll write the best things that happened were um, blah, 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 goes up there. The other thing that you could do is there is this notation which is just a line and then that just is indicates something that happened in the day so if you're using your bullet journal as a journal and you're just saying oh today went to the store 
and then picked up blah 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 all of that kind of stuff you can just make notes about that here so that's it thank you guys so much for watching this week i would love to hear if you guys do a bullet journal how you do your bullet journal if you have pictures that you can send me send me a link to your instagram if you are posting pictures of your bullet journal as well i would love to see because i'm always looking for new ideas about ways that we can get more done and be more productive with all the things that we want to do in our lives so i would love to hear about you and how you plan your day so if you like this episode please hit the like button and if you would like to see more content like this please hit subscribe and you will be notified about when more videos come your way. Thank you guys so much for watching and I guess I will see you guys in the next one. All right, bye for now.